afternoon. Our Methodist hymn is number 310 in the music issue, Table of Plenty, number 310. Please stand. God, the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever to ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites, to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. Moses, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. <coughs> Taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words of his. The word of the Lord. Tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, 
not belonging to this creation. He entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death that has taken place for deliverance, deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. He sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the city, and you will come upon a man carrying a water jar. Follow him. Whatever house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you an upstairs room, spacious, furnished, and all in order. That is the place you are to get ready for us. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover supper. During the meal, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Take this, he said. This is my body. He likewise took a cup, gave thanks, and passed it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, to be poured out on behalf of many. I solemnly assure you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the reign of God. After singing songs of praise, they walked out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord.
shortly before he died in the early 1970s, Rabbi Abraham Heschel, you may have heard of him. Uh, he was a revered author and a spiritual leader, obviously of the, the Jewish faith. Well, Rabbi Heschel suffered a near fatal heart attack. And while he was recuperating, he offered these reflections. And he writes, when I regained consciousness, my first feeling was not of despair and not even of anger. I felt only gratitude for my life, for every moment that I had lived. I was ready to depart. Take me, O Lord, he prayed. I have seen so many miracles in my life. I did not ask for success, Lord. I asked only for wonder. And Lord, you gave it to me. I did not ask for success, Lord. I asked only for wonder. And Lord, you gave it to me. Wonder. Wonder before a God who creates. A God who fashions a world with beauty. A God who images man and woman in that divine likeness. Wonder before God who is Holy Spirit, renewing, challenging, directing. Wonder before the God-man, the one that we name Jesus, who is friend, brother, and Lord. Jesus, whose very body and blood are offered, gifted, and shared with you and with me. On this feast of the body and blood of Jesus, how do we react? What is our response to that precious gift of our God? We can't respond only with intellectual theology lessons explaining exactly how this bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ. We can't respond simply with curiosity. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder how you are. Remember that one? Or where you are. Where? Thank you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> While she's here. There will be a topic of discussion tonight in dinner. Get ready, Jen. Right? What do I? Have? I have what written down. I just want you to know that. We can't respond with doubt or despair either. I wonder if life is really worth living. And we're not talking about uncertainty either. I wonder if it's going to rain tonight. See all the ways we can use that word? Huh? What is this gift of wonder? I have to give you a little hint. When, when Anne and I, Anne is our faith formation coordinator for our older kids, and when we teach the, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, my favorite is that last one. 
We used to call it fear of the Lord, remember? Now it's called wonder and awe in God's presence. That's what we're talking about. As we celebrate that gift on this feast day, we stand in, in the grasp of that wonder. And we are surprised. We are amazed. We marvel. We delight. We are enraptured. We are in awe. Wonder is Moses with his shoes off before the burning bush. Wonder is our Blessed Mother, newly called to be the mother of Jesus. <clears throat> Wonder is Thomas the Apostle discovering his Lord and God as he placed his hands in the wounds of Christ. Wonder is a young mother looking with love on her newborn infant. Wonder, and I had this experience this afternoon, it was so beautiful. I anointed someone up at Somerset Ridge. This couple is 63 years married, and her husband asked if I could go. They're not from Somerset originally. He's 98 years old, doesn't look a day over 50. But as I anointed her, the unspeakable love between that husband and wife was so evident. It was beautiful. As he started to cry when I anointed her. That's wonderful. That, I propose, should be our first reaction to the Eucharist, to the body and blood of Jesus. We are surprised, we are amazed, we are enraptured, we marvel, we delight, we are in awe. Why? Because something surprising, amazing, enraptured, marvelous, delightful, and awesome has broken into our blah, commonplace world. <clears throat> Jesus, God's only beloved Son, out of sheer love, gives us his flesh to eat, his blood to drink. Now, I got beat by one year. For 36 years, I can't stand before you and pretend to intellectually understand that. Can't do it. But I can simply welcome that miracle in awe and delight. And so friends, I, I ask you, do we stand in awe before the Eucharist? As we cradle the body and blood of Jesus in our human hands, on our tongues, let's ask for that gift, that gift of God, given to that remarkable rabbi. Dear Lord, grant me the grace of wonder. Surprise me, amaze me, awe me in every crevice of your universe. Lord, I do not seek the reason for it all. I seek only the one.
wonder of it all. And let me tell you, we had that long before Foxwoods ever did. <laughs> consecrated religious and lay ministers in the church. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that they will know the healing and comfort of Jesus, our bread and life. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that they may celebrate the heavenly banquet. We remember, especially during this Eucharist, Agnes Goda. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to recognize you in the breaking of the bread. Set our hearts on fire with love for you. For you are Lord, forever and to ever.
Friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise of the Lord in His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> The mystery of
clouds of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edgar our Bishop and all the clergy. <coughs> Remember Agnes and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in their mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the St. Patrick and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Friends, just a word of uh, reminder, maybe a word of instruction for our communion procession this afternoon. Deacon Bob and I, and from going forward, we'll do this in all our masses, Deacon and I are going to stand here in the center aisle. It's just going to be the two of us for ministers of the Eucharist. And so we ask you those seated on the side, if you'd come across when the middle aisle comes, like we've done in the past. But it's just going to be two of us here, because of too many traffic jams, you know, before. So let us first go to those people who are seated up front and who find it a little more challenging uh, to get around, okay? So go we'll to them first, and then we'll take our places and we invite you to come forward. So we all know it's a little time, so take your time. That's okay. It's not a sit girl will wait for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.
please join in singing number 372, The Irish Hustle. I thought it was an honor of Sister Catherine. <laughs> Oregon, you know? It's going to be both. <laughs>
Again, thank you, Caesar, for your help with us today. And make sure you watch on the website and on Facebook with the assignment. Okay? So you can. Thanks so much. The Lord be with you. May our almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Go find the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to go out the side door here so you get to meet uh, Brian and kick off congratulations to Father Butler. Say hi to Deacon and Sister, and I'll make sure you get a place at the front of the room. Have a good night.